Are you tired of your current home? Like, tired. But every single person is like, no, wait for the market to crash. No, wait for rates to drop. All the fear mongering videos are played out, overdone, corny. Because here's the reality. Even with a crash, you will never realize the savings on a house like what took place during the pandemic. As in, according to CNNMoney.com, to bring home affordability back to long-term averages, aka to make yesterday's price today's price, it would take a combination of up to a 37% decline in home prices, plus mortgage rates would need to drop by four points, and a 60% growth in median household incomes. If you are new to my channel, then welcome. If you are not new, then you guys know how I am. I just like to give it to you straight so then you can make a decision because unlike the fear mongers, in this video, I'm actually telling you how you can implement a move up strategy because let's be real, what if you need to switch school districts for your kids? Or what if your wife just absolutely cannot stay in your current house anymore? Or what if you want to relocate to freaking Texas or the Carolinas like every single other person who's working remotely right now? Would you like to move on with your life and buy your new house without hurting your pockets and do it to where you're even making money? Because here's the thing, even with the recent update of the Fed's plan to cut interest rates in 2024, because well, right now mortgage rates are currently hovering high six to seven-ish percent. And so I threw together this spreadsheet so you guys can, so I can paint a picture of what does CNN money really mean when they say to bring prices back to what they were. So let's take a look at these four scenarios that I put together. The first one is yesterday's price. So pre-pandemic, early pandemic prices, you get a home for $400,000. Let's say you do a 5% down payment, so you bring a 20 grand. Let's say you earn $100,000 a year, and during that time, rates were in the twos and the threes. We'll use three and a half percent. We need to account for property taxes. Here in New Jersey, property taxes can easily cost you seven, eight, nine, twelve, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 per year. We have homeowners insurance, principal and interest. In this scenario, I do not have mortgage insurance because I just want to say this is for illustrative purposes only. By all means, this is not a rate quote, but all of that rolls into a total mortgage payment of $2,456 and 29% of your income is going towards your mortgage. That's not bad. Now today's price in most markets, easily the home prices have gone up 30%. In this article, they reference 37%. So 37% increase on $400,000 is 548. You're bringing a little more money to the table. Let's say your income is the same because let's be real, most people's income has remained flat. Right now, rates are around 7%. We have the same amount of property taxes, same amount of insurance, even though insurance has gone up significantly in the last couple years. But that brings you to a mortgage payment of $4,214. 51% of your income is going towards your mortgage. So let's go on to these wish positions because I have two wish positions. We have one group of people who are like, oh yeah, the market's gonna crash. I can't wait so I can buy. Okay, that's just weird. Anybody who wants the market to crash, anybody who wants a family to be underwater, the demise of someone, that's just weird, okay? But for you guys who want the market to crash, this wish position, let's say rates somehow went from dropped 37% and went back down to 400,000, you know, and the rate, the Fed are cutting rates. So let's say they cut them to 5.5, maybe they'll cut them to five, okay? We still have the same property taxes, homeowners insurance, principal and interest, that will give you a mortgage payment of $2,920. With that market crash, your mortgage payment is still higher than yesterday. Still higher than just two years ago, three years ago. Then we have wish position number two because everyone's like, oh, I'm going to wait till rates go back to 2%, 3%. That's another conversation because you guys know why rates were super low a couple years ago. And the only time rates were ever in 3% was post-2008 crash and post-the-pandemic. 
let's say the prices remain the same at 548 and maybe they'll maybe they'll drop two three percent the rates somehow miraculously went back down to 3.5 percent the mortgage payment is still higher than 2020 2021 no matter which direction we go with this thing crash no crash low rates and lower rates you, we will never get back to that price that you want ever i'm talking numbers okay i'm not talking feelings i'm not talking theories well i guess i am talking theories because of my scenarios the market would have to completely bust completely tank and blow the hell up for us to get back to a mortgage payment of what was not even five years ago and so let me add that even after the 2008 crash, home prices fell 33% and still rebounded 50% by 2018. And then when you look at home prices from the year 2000 to 2020, with that crash in there, home prices have nearly doubled. So I am curious, what do you guys think about this? I want to know. Please drop me some comments below. So my thoughts are homeowners are just going to throw in the towel and accept it, but they're going to do one of the one of three things. Either they're going to make more money so they don't feel a squeeze, or they're going to sell their home and put more money down to help mitigate the pain of the higher mortgage payment, or they're going to rent out their current home and just keep it in the family because who knows what the housing market will look like in 50 years for your kids' kids. And so if you keep your house and your family and hey, you can gain some cash flow by renting it out and just move on with your life. And so keeping your house and your family and moving up will allow you to keep your low mortgage rate, which means the total amount of money you're giving the bank is nominal, as in yesterday's home price of $400,000 at 3.5%. Over the life of the loan will cost you approximately $646,000 over 30 years. Where as that same home that today that costs 30% more, let's say $520,000 at a rate of 6.5% over 30 years will cost you $1.18 million. Let that sink in when you look at it from a total cost perspective my second point is your tenant is going to pay off your mortgage faster than you would because the idea is for your rent to be more than your mortgage payment so you can take that extra money and just apply it to that mortgage my third point is your move up home probably will be your a higher price home and historically higher priced properties tend to appreciate at a much faster rate and so then my next point is your cash flow from your rental can also be a sort of concession for your temporarily higher mortgage rate, as in you can take that ex excess cash from your rental income and apply it to the mortgage payment on your new home to make up for the higher home prices and mortgage rate. So if you make in an extra $600 on renting out your house, take that $600 and put it on your mortgage every month. So let's pretend this whole scenario is about a conventional loan, which you can do as low as a 5% down payment on your next home. And sidebar veterans, you can use your VA loan again. You may wanna check out this video here. So do not think you can't use your VA loan twice. Let me just say that. And before you get pre-approved to shop for your home, the first thing you want to do is have an idea on how much your home is worth and what is the projected rental income in your area. So you're just not walking blindly into this process. The second thing you need is to begin prepared to list your home for rent. Now, you can either do this independently or I would love to connect you with a local realtor and we'll use the lease agreement to offset the mortgage payment, which will help you qualify for the next loan. And so so renting out your home can give you the leverage you need to retain both assets, but it just needs to make sense. So let's say your current mortgage is $2,300 and you have a signed lease agreement for $3,200. With only a lease agreement, federal guidelines are we can only account for 75% of the rental income to account for vacancies, overhead, etc. So our $3,200 rental income is now technically $2,400 from a lender's perspective. That's fine because our lender rental income number still covers 
the mortgage payment of $2,300. So causing a positive effect on our income. If you have a ton of flexibility in your income, then it may be a tomato tomato situation for you. But if you are someone who is on the edge of qualifying, the negative or positive effect of the rental income can make or break your loan. Now that we have your lease agreement, we'll review your current income, assets, and credit score, and that's it. It's just business as usual. You find the home you love, you go under contract, we order the appraisal, order title, clear any underwriting conditions, and then we close you. And let me just add, you guys, disclaimer, always buy the home you can afford. But this is something to think about and something to talk about when you are with your family and friends this upcoming holiday. If you know anyone who is looking to buy, please share this video as I lend in 48 states. And I just want to say happy holidays to all of you guys. And thank you so much for supporting my channel. And until next time.